Superheroes played the same role in my life that they did in so many people's. The dream fulfillment of what would that be like if I was that powerful? Wonder Woman played that role for me personally in the way that I think Superman, Batman did for so many boys. One of my first jobs in comics was drawing Wonder Woman, and I felt this burden of having to draw her responsibly and really respect the character and show how strong and powerful she was. And she's not only iconic, but she's still gonna be growing and changing. Now, she's on a screen and she's gonna be 70 feet tall. It's gonna be a big, big, powerful moment. That's really important because Wonder Woman is the definitive feminist superhero. Wonder Woman has just turned 75 years old. Don't you think it's time for her to grace the big screen? I mean, come on. William Marston was an incredibly interesting man. He was a famous psychologist. He and his wife helped develop the lie detector test. But he truly believed that women were superior. When he was in graduate school, he did a lot of experiments trying to understand the psychological differences between men and women. His research led him to believe that women's capacity for love was greater, and therefore, if women ruled the world, the world would be a better place. And he drew a lot from the relationship that he had with his wife, who was a suffragette. So he was inspired to write about a very powerful woman because he was living with a very powerful woman. A lot of husbands, when their wives were going to be suffragists, they were like, no way, this can't happen. And he really beat the drum for women to do anything that they wanted to do. We lived in Rye, New York, and my dad worked with Charlie Gaines that owned DC Comics, was one of the owners. And one day, Charlie laughingly said, hey, Bill, why don't you do a comic, ha, ha, ha. So he went home and talked to my mom, and my mother said, well, let's have a woman superhero for a change instead of all the males. So he took it to Charlie Gaines, and he said, it doesn't work. It's not going to work. It never has. MC Gaines was dealing with critics who said, comic books are violent. They make kids violent. They make kids do bad things. So at the time, Marston's a very popular psychologist, and Marston said, the way to solve your publicity problem is to have a female superhero. And he said, trust me. You know, this is going to be successful, and I will show you. And Wonder Woman was a huge success. Millions of copies of the comic sold every month. There were very few female characters, and none like Wonder Woman, who had their own book. She was the only female character that had her own title and was the star of her own comic for many, many years. Marsden said, I write Wonder Woman as a new kind of propaganda to show the world what a woman could be, like a new kind of woman for the future that's strong and assertive and smart and can do anything, basically. And Harry G. Peter, the artist who draws Wonder Woman, had worked on suffrage cartoons in the 1910s with the great feminist cartoonist Annie Lucasta Rogers. And like, to me as a historian, I look at Wonder Woman and I see, oh, they've turned a suffragist into a pinup girl. You know, she really is a, a woman doing things that are hard to do in public that require a great deal of strength and courage for the sake of women's rights. That's really interesting. That's totally different than Superman and Batman, who are fighting crime. And her comic series was just as interesting as Batman, Superman, or anything else. We weren't focusing on women, we were focusing on a comic book. She never approaches anything the way Batman or Superman would. I think she's very compassionate, very strategic. There's always kind of an extra step to her. She doesn't think violence is the first answer. And to me, that just makes her a really interesting character and a leader. So I find Diana and her view of mankind in the world just very compelling because there's a whole extra layer of intelligence that you put onto that character. But what I think is most interesting is looking back, how she's just like an index. She's just a good mirror for the state of the debate of the fight for women's rights. There were two characters in comic book publication that radically changed depending on the politics of the time. It was Wonder Woman and Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane. Both those characters were created right at the beginning of World War II. Men were going off to war, uh, women were becoming more active in the workplace because they had to. And these two characters embodied 
sort of a Rosie the Riveter kind of we can do anything spirit. And then the 50s, of course, was a more conservative time in America. There was a, a real move from the government to get women back into the homes, and comics reflected that time. And certainly the rise of communism panicked people in entertainment, panicked publishers, and comics became a very conservative medium. That absolutely reflected in the pages of Wonder Woman, where you once had this incredibly progressive, very physical character suddenly reduced to a woman who was the romance editor of a magazine, was basically there to rebuff Steve Trevor and who always wanted to marry her, but still at the end of the day was not at all as progressive as she had been. The 60s, of course, a lot of science fiction, a lot of crazy pop science fiction fighting off toxic monsters from space. Crazy, but certainly a reflection of the larger pop culture. Wonder Woman had her famous 70s jumpsuit period where she was powerless. And one could look at that in a positive light, you know, oh, well, she's just keeping up with the times. But the storyline started to change, and so Gloria Steinem led a team of women to rally to get Wonder Woman's powers back. And um, I think that was really significant because in the book that Gloria Steinem published, I believe it was 1972, it was a special Ms. magazine celebrating Wonder Woman, she starts to talk about how significant Wonder Woman had been to her as a young girl. She also talks about, and I think this is why Wonder Woman is such an interesting character, she writes in this book how just incredibly relevant Wonder Woman was to her in terms of forming her own ideologies as a feminist. The means by which women who are engaged in these political activities or, you know, trying to reform health care for women, whatever campaign it is that they're fighting for, that Wonder Woman would be inspiring to them as the vessel for making those claims, that's really interesting. Like, that is a way that the character can be transformed. Ultimately, the 80s is when Wonder Woman changed, and I really believe that the current version of Wonder Woman we have is a direct result of the George Perez reboot of that character in 1985. She was an adventurer who could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Superman, had adventures on the scale of Odysseus and Theseus, and yet still promoted a message of peace. Love was still her biggest motivating factor. In the 90s, of course, Wonder Woman changed, again, reflecting the times. Bad girls were big, particularly in comics. Uh, she had a, a very popular, incredibly well-selling period where she gave up her costume. Um, the artwork was incredibly dynamic by an artist named Mike Diodato. Suddenly became this warrior princess, and fans applauded. The current marketplace really loves this notion of the Spartan Wonder Woman, the warrior Wonder Woman, who has a battle cry and a sword and shield. The other interesting transformation, of course, is her backstory, her world. Her original origin was she was created from clay by her mother because her mother wanted a baby. And the gods breathed life into the baby. But she's supposed to be part of a trinity. Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. There's a human and an alien. Where's our god? We just need a god. So now, in current continuity, she's the daughter of Zeus. Because the Greek gods, they're good and bad. and a hundred different shades of gray, and they get jealous, and they get angry. That's what makes them so interesting to, to watch and, and so interesting to write, really. We wanted Wonder Woman to be a little bit more vulnerable, to take her away from this perfect goddess character, because that's really not interesting. It doesn't give you any room to grow, and it doesn't give you any possibilities for story. You need a character to make mistakes. I really reject the idea that because there are so few women in comics, every woman who is in comics has to be Miss Perfect, empowering, never cries. I, it's how dull. Like, I don't think it's about creating good role models. I think it's about writing women as humans. But she's very much a character that's put in situations where she had to use everything at her disposal, not just her lasso of truth and not just her bullet deflecting bracelets. She had to use all her wiles to get out of situations or fix things or save people. So you see that in her and I think it's inspirational. And then Wonder Woman was taken from a comic book into a real live TV venture. Linda Carter appeared and kept Wonder Woman alive. The show had a huge impact on my generation. We all were Wonder Woman on the playground. We all wanted to look like Wonder Woman and be Wonder Woman and be as strong as Wonder Woman. So I know what Wonder Woman can mean to a little girl. 
everything about her. Absolute, her femininity, her beauty, her strength, her power. You know, I grew up in such a desperate situations. I just imagine if I ran around a building when someone was chasing me, calling me names, that I could spin and turn into Wonder Woman and that would be it. It's a female fantasy to be all of that, that beauty and strength. What Wonder Woman brought to my memory of things, she was about justice in a feminine way, which is very powerful. Women are the wave of the future. And sisterhood is stronger than anything. For me, you wanted to be her. You wanted to do those things as a little girl. But it's really tough, the kind of perception of women in the male gaze part of this, because Linda Carter was not exactly averagely built. She's in really what you could consider a strapless bathing suit, essentially. And I do think that her body type uh, her body size, all of that, was to uphold a certain media standard of beauty. But at the same time, she wasn't necessarily sexualized in that outfit. I argue that one of the reasons she was so successful in that role is because as hot as the costume is, she walks around like it's no big deal. This is who she is. This is the world she came from. This is what they wear in that world. And she owned it. And that's what I think is great about the message of Wonder Woman, is that it's how you want to project yourself and not how others see you. In her characteristics, she's a person who is compassionate. She's standing there on her own, and she turns to herself to make those decisions. Wonder Woman was always identified from the start as a superhero whose whole mission was fighting for women's rights, for equality for women. The current opposition to fascism was the opposition of a feminist. But it's not like there's one big consensus about what feminism is and what an ideal woman who's really totally enlightened and truly empowered would look like. And this is where Wonder Woman can come in beautifully because it's like, of course you're gonna have your feminists who are gonna be angry at this one specific feminist ideal. And of course it's not perfect, but what is perfect? There's a lot that's still not resolved about, you know, feminine identity, what power means, what power means in terms of is your power through your beauty or is your power through your force of will, your sense of, of righteousness, your sense of empathy or all of these other things we discussed that define who Wonder Woman is. And you can look to Wonder Woman at different time periods and kind of pluck her out and say, look, she represents our movement because she's fierce and she's strong and she's just kind of embodies the ethos of the movement rather than saying everything she was depicting in this comic series is exactly what our movement stands for. But I think especially with Wonder Woman, even if you don't know the history, you can say like, oh, I like that character. I like what she stands for. Um, and I think for me, like, I, I like the idea of an Amazonian character um, as someone that I'm like, yeah, that's my choice. That's what I want to be like. A lot of readers, they're looking for something in comics. They're looking in many ways for a moral compass, especially when you're younger and reading comics. And it's important when you have younger readers to make sure that you represent everybody equally, which makes Wonder Woman really extra important because of that. And I think a lot of times she bears the burden of having to represent all women, which is kind of unfair and difficult to write. And the way I would look at it is if this, if this icon shifts anything in a good direction, if there's one little boy or girl out there who is like, I'm gonna dress up like Wonder Woman and feel empowered, then it doesn't matter what it looks like, it doesn't matter why it manifests as long as it does. I hope that when young men see a powerful woman character that they can kind of extrapolate that out to the women around them, to see those women as stronger beings with agency. I think it's the main thing that you hope for in a situation like that, that they, they begin to see in women the same things that they see themselves, because uh, we're not all that different. And I think that's why Wonder Woman is so important. You know, it starts with the feminist aspect of it, but then it goes even broader, and just the basic humanity of it. And we got to celebrate that. We, we have to spotlight that. We have to showcase that. Because if we can even influence a few people that are watching it to almost subconsciously inspire to be that or see that through the, this character, then we've, we've done something really good. 
we know that stories can create change. And so it is critical that we change those stories because we, as families, as part of communities, however we see ourselves, we have a lot to lose every time communities are mistreated in our media system. And those changes have to happen. Definitely the industry has jumped on board with the whole idea of female empowerment and, and female-driven characters and female-driven stories and things like that. And I think the mistake that we might be making with that is segregating it so like this is a female story, this is a female this and this is a man story. It's just a story and it's just a person and trying to make it a girl thing is the biggest mistake you can make. And so Wonder Woman is a superhero for all of us. Wonder Woman is a truth seeker and truth isn't gender specific. It's ridiculous to think otherwise. And that's, that goes back into this world of Wonder Woman and superheroes where we can go anywhere in this world. We can go anywhere. And we need a Wonder Woman and we need all kinds of female representations that help get us there. I grew up with powerful women in my life and I always felt like powerful women are our important voice, not just in movies, but in the world. And, and having that equal representation of sort of male and female energy um, is really important to me, and I think it's an important thing to get out into the world as much as we can. So we felt that if we were going to expand the universe, we should really be looking to expand it in a way to embrace Wonder Woman. And we're glad to be part of it happening now. This thing is from another world. We've killed things from other worlds before. She with you? I thought she was with you. It's amazing to think that 75 years ago, what a radical idea to be attractive and powerful and fighting. That was something that was so aspirational and so distant, yet interestingly, it's actually taken all the way till now. So it's time for this character to step into the future and into this film. There's a lot of responsibility with that. She is so loved and treasured around the world. We have to get her character right. I think the best way to explain like how important it is is when Gal first came to set, her and Debbie shared this like very special bonding moment. I was super surprised how emotional I felt about this moment because I knew that she was going to be a role model to all these young girls and and women of all ages. It touched me in a way I didn't really expect. It took me off guard. The effect that her in costume had was fascinating to see develop. I mean, a bunch of us were crying that just how powerful the imagery was. People were just saying that they have anticipated for so long to see Wonder Woman on the big screen. And when they saw me ready with the makeup and the hair and the costume, they were very excited. So it was very moving for me. I like the idea that my daughter will have this amazing superhero character who's important part of the fabric of the DC world. And I think that Wonder Woman brings a lot of values with her. Uh, rather than the fact that she's very strong and she has this amazing strength, she's been around for so long and she's very wise. She knows how to choose her battles. She can read a few steps forward. And I think this is a very important character for all people to, to see. Ah! Look really good. Look really good from here. She has the opportunity to communicate some ideas that no other character in this whole universe that's being created can communicate. Having this opportunity to bring a woman into that world so that people can, and I'm not saying just women, but people in general can look at this female hero and understand that, again, it's a, trying to turn the conversation toward equality. It's a way of sort of maybe creating some sort of balance, I guess, is the most important thing. So I think seeing her be an incredible badass, but completely in herself as a woman and still attractive and still cool and still loving and still kind and losing none of that while being just as powerful, that's the thing that I feel like now is the moment for that more than ever. That seismic moment 
when you see Batman and Superman on screen together for the very first time, you bring Wonder Woman into that mix. And for a, a DC fan who loves these characters, to see all three together, it, it just changes it dramatically because she brings a very different perspective than either one of them. I think it's really important that the character gets out there. And I think it's, it's going to be the start of hopefully something really, really great. I think that I'm grateful <laughs> that she still has a place in the world. And of course, that uh, you go into any department store today and you see one woman toys and dolls and you name it and all kinds of stuff. So that for the children, the little kids, the little girls, she's still part of their world. I think that's uh, wonderful.